Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Wellborn, and this is Faith Baptist Church Sunday School. We'll be meeting in person tomorrow at 9.45, so please join us. But this is the same lesson. Of course, Alex the kitty cat won't be here tomorrow at church, but anyway, so you may hear him in the background. He's out here with me. But we're studying the last church and the seven churches at Revelation. It's the church at Laodicea. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. And so, uh, so if you want to join along, it's Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Um, actually, uh, starting with verse 14. But anyway, church at Laodicea, it's in modern-day Turkey. It's near uh, Colossae, which is Colossians. And also, it's near Ephesus, which is Ephesians. And then, uh, of course, the church at Philadelphia. We just looked at that last week. And uh, Smyrna and other places like that. But modern-day Turkey is um, where Laodicea was located now. It's an archaeological dig, just like the other churches. And uh, so anyway, one of the things about Laodicea, it's the only church that is just rebuked constantly in these verses. The other churches were, were told, you know, you need to work on these things or whatever, or like last week, you are a great church, you've done a great job, like in church in Philadelphia. But Laodicea, one of the things that people in modern day culture think of is um, lukewarm. Um, you'll hear that term mentioned. Um, hey, Simon's joining this too. Hey, kitty kitty. So anyway, um, if you've ever had a sore throat, one of the things that you can do is gargle with salt water. I did that one night, and um, this has been a while back. And for some reason, I left that, that, that cup out um, near on, on the countertop near where um, I tend to have my breakfast and, and that sort of thing in the mornings. And so the next morning I woke up and for some reason I thought it was just plain water and, and I was just kind of out of it. And so I took a big gulp of it and it was lukewarm, which means it was neither hot nor cold, uh, salt water, <laughs> which was just awful. So you can imagine just, you know, and, and that shock. And that happens to people. You, if you've ever had something and um, taken a sip of something thinking it's something else and you're just kind of in shock, um, but especially just room temperature water Ugh. you know so anyway um and, and hot water you know it's just but the context of this so let's look at revelation chapter 3 write to the angel of the church at laodicea thus says the amen the faithful the true witness the originator of god's creation i know your works that you are neither cold nor hot i wish you were cold or hot because you are lukewarm I'm, and neither cold nor hot, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. In fact, some translations say spew. I think the King James says spew, which is basically just, you know, all kinds of great visuals. For you say, I'm rich. I've become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. So the context of being hot nor cold is at Colossae, they were known for their cool springs and they had just the, the water when it came out was just was just chilly and so the refreshing water of at Colossae at um, I'd say about six miles away at Heropolis they had these hot healing springs here in North Carolina it's interesting there was multiple locations of sulfur springs and healing springs places if you go down towards Denton there was an old community there an old resort healing springs and uh, in the early 1900s late 1800s early 1900s but anyway so these two places that were near Laodicea were known for their, their waters. And uh, at Laodicea, they had to have the water kind of piped in because they did not have a good water source. Now, if you know the Romans, they were known for their aqueducts. And, uh, you know, they would, they would have water basically kind of trellised in or piped in from, from long ways away. By the time the hot water got to Laodicea, it was just kind of room temperature. Same thing about the cold. It was, it was not effective at all. So Jesus, this is, this is basically, he had appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos and had given him this revelation, was saying this to the church at Laodicea, because you're so self-sufficient, you're not effective. You're, you're neither hot nor cold. You depend on your wealth so much. Now, Laodicea, a bunch of these churches were built on trade routes. Laodicea was known as the banking center. It was also known as a place where they produced a lot of 
uh, wool, black soft wool clothing. And so they had that. And also they had um, kind of this eye ointment they were known for that would help with um, if you had like a sty or something like that and your eye was swollen, you could put this eye on there, uh, ointment on your eye, and it would help. So let's look at the next passage. Mr. Allergies this morning. Ah, I love the morning air. It's beautiful. Revelation chapter 3, verses 18 through 19. I advise you to buy gold, uh, buy from me gold refined in fire so that you may be rich, white clothes so that you may be dressed, and your shameful nakedness uh, not be exposed, and ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be zealous and repent. So three things, and you're thinking, how can you buy these things from Jesus? Well, part of the process in refining gold is, is heat and fire, and it takes um, a, lot of, <clears throat> a lot of heat to get that iron ore out of there and to make that gold perfect. And so it's almost a metaphor of a Christian's life whenever you allow trials and things like that in your life. And not this, well, not so much that you allow them. I mean, they happen anyway. But when you look at it from a Christ-like perspective and allow it to mold you and to, and to allow you to be more dependent on Christ instead of your own earthly possessions because they were known for their gold. And so he was using that example. Same thing for um, white clothing. They were known for their black clothing. And I know it sounds funny, you know, um, I'm, you know, wearing a black shirt. First thing I think of is dandruff in the wintertime, you know, wearing a black shirt. But anyway, they would wear black clothing. And uh, so he was saying from the opposite, you know, something that you need, need from me that you don't need to depend on yourselves. And the eye ointment, they were known for that eye ointment. They made a lot of money. They, they again, textiles, this eye ointment that was only from this area, somehow they had that proprietary, um, just that, that trademark or copyright or whatever <laughs> on that. And then, of course, gold. They were known for their financial banking center. So John, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is telling them these three things you need to work on in your lives. And I'm sure they were kind of like, when they were reading that, they were thinking, but these are some of the three things that make us the strongest. But again, what you rely on yourself typically doesn't allow you to rely on, on Christ for those things. And you know, I'm one of these where I like to have backups. If you hop in a vehicle, battery doesn't start. Have another vehicle, you can hop in another truck or something like that. Um, air conditionings, whatever. If you have uh, air conditioning goes out and you have one of those portable air conditioners, I think I mentioned this before in another lesson. Um, you know, they were throwing out one of those air conditioning units and actually um, I'm like, hey, I'll take it. And you know, keeping things like that and having them on hand or whatever, I mean, you, you know, we tend to keep stuff um, and, you know, it's, it's amazing if you ever move how much stuff you have. You think, well, I can move and it won't be that bad. I'm telling you, it's amazing how many truckloads of stuff you might have. So, you know, we do that as people, especially in, in the United States. We tend to have stuff. And self-reliance, we're taught that. We're taught as kids and, and other, you know, you, you need to be able to make it on your own and do well. As part of that, we need to really focus on you need... Christ to guide you through these decisions that you make and those sort of things. And so that's, that's what he's saying in Revelation. I may have a random deer join me out here. I don't know. I'm out in the woods, as you can tell. So Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 through 22. I love this one. This is a classic passage. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me or she to the one who conquers I will give the right to sit with me at the throne, just as I also conquered and sat down with my father at the throne. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. And he wraps up the letter to the seven churches with that statement. And I love that visual because I, I remember as a child at Antioch Baptist Church in the early 80s, and you may remember this if you've grown up in church, that old painting of Jesus knocking at a door, and it's kind of a wooden door, an arch door, and it has a small, uh, I don't even know if it has a small window or not, but anyway, it's, it's it's this old painting of Jesus knocking at the door, <clears throat> and that's where that comes from, is that passage, and what he's saying is, listen, I'm telling you these things, I'm trying to get your attention, that you need to fix these things in your lives, 
but I'm right here. And if you change these things, I'm right here with you. And so there's, there's that hope. And I love any message that if you ever go to any church, look for that hope in any of the messages that the pastor brings to you. I know Mickey tends to bring, he, he brings that hope in his messages. Uh, my dad used to do that too. And it's, it's that hope of having that, knowing that Jesus is willing to be there for you anytime and anywhere. And the church at Laodicea had that opportunity. Now, as we know, and through history, each of the seven churches are now archaeological sites. I've mentioned that several times in the lessons. So seeing how that candle was removed, in a sense, spiritually from each church, uh, because they struggled and, and, things, and things happened. What about us? What about now? As we meet together in our church group, not so much the building, but as in our group, what are we doing to remain currently focused on Christ, but also not watering down our theology, not uh, being too self-reliant, and being a testimony in the region where we are at and wherever we're at. So again, join us tomorrow, 945 Sunday School. Thanks so much. We'll see you.